This video is for my electrolysis practitioners for a change. So if you provide electrolysis as a service, you might enjoy this video. I'm going to share what I personally learned about electrolysis since starting my own business in particular, because I have been keeping very close contact with my clients, message back and forth, we send it, uh, pictures so I can see how their skin is reacting, how long it takes to heal, um, and I've learned a lot by doing that. I trained in electrolysis about eight years ago and a lot has changed since then. My experience is a lot more, I also did a course with the BIAE which helped massively. So I've got all of this new information that I wanted to share with you. The biggest thing that I realised was how everyone is so, so different. Now I already knew that everyone's different. but. I didn't know the extent of it. One setting can work for one person and that type of hair. And if someone else has the same background, the same type of hair, they could react differently with the same setting. So where I used to talk about electrolysis before as if it was one setting fits all, because I was like, oh, you know, I went to this person and this setting worked really well for me. It's not one size fits all at all. It's very, very, very individual. You can use loads of different settings on one person in one area if they have thick and thin hair in one area. So it can be difficult making predictions in terms of when someone is going to see results, how someone's skin is going to react, how quickly their skin is going to heal. I couldn't even begin to tell you how different people are, like the types of hairs that I have seen going from really fine hair which almost looks like peach fuzz, to really thick stubborn hair or really thick white hair. It is very, very difficult. Huge range of hairs and skin types and skin sensitivities and skin reactions. The list just goes on and on. So yeah, that is like the biggest thing that I've learned. It's just, it's not one size fits all and it's nowhere near it. Okay, another thing that I learned and that I've realized about electrolysis since starting my own business is that generally speaking, everyone's goal is to get rid of unwanted visible hair, the thicker hairs, that's what the focus is. But once people start noticing how good electrolysis really is, then they start asking me to do the finer, finer hairs and then they start to want other areas done. Now I personally only provide electrolysis for facial hair, I do it from the neck up just um, something that I chose to specialise in. So for example, if I'm uh, treating the chin, my client starts to see how good the results are, then they wanna incorporate a bit of lip or a bit of the cheeks. So it's a good thing, I guess, because from the business perspective, I'm getting repeat repeated business. And if I'm permanently destroying hair in one area, that client still comes back for other areas. So it's good from that sense. And then obviously it's good from the client's perspective because you know they're loving the results and they want to start doing other areas and this is how I was when I started my electrolysis journey. I started with one area, I wanted to see how it how it was going um, and now I get the abdomen done, upper lip and I get other little bits done like the I had a few sessions on the back of my neck, um, little bits here and there. So yeah this is what I've realised with electrolysis. Again I've seen the extent of it since starting my own business. The next thing that I learned is how helpful it is to make a note of everything that you do with each session. Now a consultation form, there isn't a huge amount of space to make notes. So I have a separate paper attached to the consultation form and I write down every session, you know, the number of sessions, I write the date, how many minutes we did, the price, what needle size I used, what settings I used, what area I did. Cause sometimes if someone's doing like the whole lower half of the face, sometimes we alternate, like we might do this side and then we might do this side on the other, you know. So yeah, that has helped massively. Okay, the next thing that I've realized about electrolysis is how my clients forget what is normal with skin reactions. So in my uh, consultations, I show my clients pictures of possible reactions that they might get. It's a lot of information that I give in, a con in the consultation. People can forget. So one thing that I do is obviously reassure them when they message me. But one thing that I am doing with my consultations now is at the end, I ask them if they've understood everything. Do you understand that your skin can go red like this? Do you understand that your skin could scab like this? So yeah, that has helped massively. 
Another thing that I realised um, when taking pictures, I was taking pictures before the patch test, but what has happened and I've realised is when that client comes for their first session, that is when I should have taken the before picture because that is when you see all of the growth. And it is so important to get that good before, the good and accurate before picture. The next thing that I learned about is scabbing. Now I was driving myself insane when it came to whether scabbing is normal or not, what type of scabbing is normal, what type of scabbing is unnormal, abnormal, <laughs> unnormal. And the reason I was so confused about this topic is because my training eight years ago, my textbook, it wasn't clear. On one side it's saying what causes scabbing and why it happens, but on the other side it says on the aftercare bit, oh if the client sees scabbing they should report it to the salon as if it was not supposed to happen. So I have been confused about scabbing for a long time and I did come to the conclusion where I said it's common and I said if they are very large it, it shouldn't happen if they are very very large right. I have finally learned that scabbing is normal okay it happens it's your body's way of forming a plaster over that follicle that we treated to prevent bacteria from getting in. The size of the scab varies depending on the size of the hair and the area. So I talk a lot about facial hair, but scabbing on the bikini line, well on the body in general, can be larger, especially on the bikini line. The thicker the hair, the more likely you're gonna scab. The thinner the hair, you're possibly gonna get a smaller scab um, and there is a possibility that you might not scab at all. You might not even notice that you have scabbed because it would just be like a tiny little bit of crust that your skin has formed to protect it um, and you could just possibly feel it and yeah i finally have learnt this and it's not driving me crazy anymore because i was like obviously keeping close contact with my client checking what size everyone scabbing is and i'm like i can see that it's happening to you know 99 percent of my clients there might be one percent that have very 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 minimal scabbing so it was driving me insane but yeah i guess another thing if you are an electrolysis practitioner is update your qualifications if you haven't done a course in a long time do a refresher it is life-changing. I'm planning on doing another one next year. I did a lot of courses this year, so I'm not gonna do any more, but next year I definitely wanna do another one with electrolysis. Another thing that I learned is how one person's thick hair is not the same as another person's thick hair. What I mean by this is a client might come in and think that they have the thickest hair in the world. And when I look at it, I don't think it's that thick at all because I have had thicker myself or I've seen thicker on my other clients. I've had to learn to be honest with my client because it can be helpful with their self-esteem if I'm telling them that I don't think the hair is thick. But I have learned not to do it in a way where I'm dismissing their feelings. I'm not gonna not treat the hair or make them feel like they're crazy. No, if they if they feel insecure about a hair and in their eyes, if they think it's thick, I'm of course gonna respect their feelings and not dismiss it and do um, the treatment exactly how they want. Again, this comes down to how I've said every client is very, very different. The final thing that I've learned, I've left the best till last, it is the most rewarding thing that I have done. When I first meet a client, their self-esteem is low, they're not smiling, they feel down, I can see it, I can feel it, I sense it. And then as soon as they get to that sweet spot where they're starting to see results, my client walks in through that door and they are smiling, their personality starts coming out, they're coming out of their shell, they're more confident. It honestly makes me really happy and it's the most rewarding thing that I've ever felt. To feel that transition is a really nice feeling. It's almost like when my clients first come in, I've been there, it's almost like you kind of, there's feelings of anger, there's feelings of like, you kind of feel sorry for yourself and there's feelings of like, oh, like I have to be here, I have to do this treatment that's not comfortable to get. Um, it's, you know, you feel down. And then when you start seeing results, 
you're like, oh my God, finally, I have hope, this is working. I'm coming through to the other side. And it's like a feeling of relief. And I can really sense that. And it's so rewarding and I'm about to cry. I'm not gonna cry. But um, it does make me feel really happy. And again, it's something that I've learned since starting my own business because I keep very close contact with my customers. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Please comment anything that you've realized about electrolysis. And that's it for today. I'll see you next time.